Hello, Julie from Technique Tuesday here, and today I'm working on a background masking project using the Kind Cosmo stamp. I've stamped my image on watercolor paper with waterproof ink. First step is figuring out and marking where I want my background to be. I've got a ruler here that has a zero in the middle on one side, so I can keep things symmetrical. I took that and decided that I wanted my masked background to be two inches wide. My page is four and a half inches wide, so to center the ruler, I lined it up at the, on the edges at uh, two and a quarter inches. I marked it up here at one inch on each side of the zero, and then I marked it down here. Next is top and bottom. This is a six inch piece of paper, so I center it with three at the top and three at the bottom. If the paper is a tiny bit over the measurement, I default to the top so that the three is at the top and I don't worry so much about the bottom. I decided that I wanted the mask area to be two and a half inches tall and that it didn't need to be centered from top to bottom. So I looked at my zero and marked one inch below zero and one and a half inches above zero. I marked that on each side and then I took my ruler and figured out where those corners would be. So there's a corner here and a corner here and I marked them with little tiny pencil marks. I don't want those marks to be very big or very dark just because that way they'll erase easier. Then I went down here and did exactly the same thing. The next step is the masking part. I'm going to take my washi tape and stick it down just over those little marks so that it's barely covering them. This is so that once I go to remove the mask and erase the lines, I'm not having to erase through paint. I'll put it down on four, all four sides and press the tape down to seal it. I want to seal it well enough that paint can't get under it, but not so well that when I remove it, I'm tearing the paper. As for the tape, I could also probably use uh, painter's tape because we are painting, uh, but I happen to have washi tape on hand, so I'm using that. Now I'm ready to start my painting. I want my background to be sort of a gradient from green to blue. I've got my watercolors here, along with my handy dandy water pen and a piece of paper towel. I'm going to start out with my water wash. And I'm not being really precise about this because it's just open background space, but I am going to be precise when I get to the edges of the flowers. I want the flowers to be white, which is why I decided to do a background. So they'll stand out and won't look like I just didn't bother to color. I'll keep going on that, taking the green about halfway up until I get something that looks a bit like this. And when I get there, I'm going to start in with this turquoise, except I'm going to start with the wash. I keep forgetting. And I can, coincidentally, smooth out a bit of the green that here that didn't go on quite as smoothly as I would have liked. I'm going to overlap the green a bit so I can get a smooth gradation. In order to make sure that the gradation is nice and, nice and smooth, I can go back in with a little green to add to the turquoise. Once again, I'll go slowly and more precisely around the edges of the flowers. I'll spread the turquoise to about three quarters of the way up the, ba up the background. I'll probably go around the edges of the flowers again and darken up the color just a touch to add contrast. I'll keep an eye on it as it dries since as I go back over previous colors, sometimes I end up with uneven spots. If that happens, I can go in with my color and touch things up. I'll go until I get to this point. Next, I'm going to start in on my darker, bluer blue. I've got this green in already and the turquoise here, so I'm moving on to the blue. I finished my water wash and will now add the blue.
I'm adding a bit more water to my blue here and picking up a lot of color on my brush. Because I got my water washed in really well, I can just touch my brush to the page and my extra intense load of color will just flow from the corner beautifully. I may have been put a bit too much color here, but I can just use my brush and some clean water to pick up and spread it out a bit. If I decided that this was too much color to spread around, I could, while it was still super wet, use a dry paper towel to blot it up and start over again. And because I have such an intense blue here, I'm going to add a bit more of the turquoise to balance the intensity. And now I'm going to remember my water, water wash and go into the centers of the flowers to add a little bit of yellow to each of them. As Bev has pointed out, Cosmo flowers come in all kinds of different colors, but they all have a nice yellow center. So you can be pretty creative with the color of the petals, and as long as it has the yellow center, you're pretty good. I'll add a little bit of orange for some shading and keep going on it and probably go back into the other colors, adding a bit more color to the background, smoothing, spreading the color some more, darkening the color around the flowers for that extra little bit of contrast. I'll come up with something like this. Now, if you've seen some of my other videos, you may know that about a year ago, I did a video for the cherry blossoms, which we will link to down below in the description, where I did some stippling around the edge with my watercolor. I did some of that here to add a bit of texture. If you'd like to go watch that video, I can recommend it. It's kind of a fun technique. So here's a finished project. And you can see that I went in with a touch of pink on the petals here. I decided after I finished it that I like it better with just plain white petals. It's just a lot more striking because of that wonderful color co contrast. So now I'll very carefully take off my masking tape. I go very slowly so I can stop if I need to. And I pull it off of a very, at a very sharp angle, which seems to help avoid accidentally tearing the paper. Once it has dried, I will take a clean eraser, which is important as a dirty eraser can leave marks, and I'll remove my little marks. The corner marks are most important because I, they will show no matter what I do with the page. The edges aren't as important because I'm planning to cut down the paper to, my, to fit on my card. So those marks will be get, end up getting cut off anyway. And it, at any rate, I will go around and erase all the marks just to be safe. As you can see, my example has been cut down to about four by five and a quarter inches and put on a four and a quarter by five and a half inch card front. Here's my finished piece. I had fun with this project. I hope you enjoyed learning a little bit about masking a background and that you can use something like this on your next project. Thanks for watching.